Hello my friends, it's Danny, and today I'm gonna to show you how to cut and cook a butternut squash, plus I'll share two super easy, clean and delicious recipes as well. Now, butternut squash is one of the most popular varieties of winter squash, and this is the time of year when we start to see a lot of them. So I'm gonna show you just how easy it can be to work with a butternut squash. So the first thing I like to do is trim off the top and the bottom of the squash. This is gonna give us a nice, stable base to work with. Then, using a potato peel, I just peel off the skin. So you're gonna do this the same exact way you would if you were peeling a baked potato. And you're gonna notice that the older the squash is, the thicker the skin is gonna be, and the younger the squash is, the thinner the skin is gonna be. Either way, this really is not difficult to do. It just takes a little bit of patience. From here, I'm gonna lay the squash down, and then I'm gonna slice it right where the neck meets the round, bulbous part at the bottom, right? So where the thin part meets the round, wide part of the squash. Then I'm going to take that wide round bottom and slice that in half as well. Now you're going to notice in the center here there's a bunch of little seeds. So you're just going to take a spoon and scoop those seeds out along with all of the fibrous membrane that surround them. Now just like with any winter squash, the seeds in the middle you never want to throw them away because they're just like pumpkin seeds and you can roast them up for a fun delicious little snack. And for those of you who want the step by step on just how to do that, I'm going to leave a link down in the description box below. So now we've got three pieces of squash all cleaned and ready to chop up. So what I first do is I take the bottom halves and I slice them into half moons and then I lay them down and cut them into one inch chunks. Do note that I use the word chunks instead of cubes because I feel like chunks gives us a little more room to not be so precise. You just want them to be around the same size. Then for the neck, I like to stand it up and slice down vertically to create boards. Then I lay those boards down, cut them into strips, and then the other way into chunks. Now you can of course cut these chunks a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller knowing that the bigger they are, the longer they're gonna take to cook, and the smaller they are, the faster they're gonna cook. And note to self, if you find yourself wrestling with the squash a bit to get the job done, just cut it in half again. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with. So now that we are all clear on how to prep a butternut squash, also keep in mind that you can absolutely go to the grocery store and let somebody else do all the dirty work for you by buying your squash already pre-prepped just like this. Hashtag no shame in a shortcut. So from here, we're gonna take that squash and get it onto a rimmed baking sheet. You could put a little parchment paper on there if you wanted easy cleanup. I'm just going right onto the baking sheet. Then I'm gonna drizzle this with a tablespoon of avocado oil and season with some salt and some pepper. I use about three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper for a three pound squash. Now this is the most basic seasoning that you can do and it really is all you need. It's absolutely delicious. But if you wanted to play with your flavors a little bit, Butternut squash also pairs really well with garlic, rosemary, curry, cumin, thyme. So if you've got the inclination, have a little bit of fun with it. But do make sure that you don't overcrowd your pan. The thing is, if you get too much on one pan, you're gonna end up steaming your squash instead of roasting it, and then we're not gonna get that rich, golden color and that deep flavor that we're looking for when we roast our food. As a matter of fact, now that I'm saying that, I feel like my pan is a little overcrowded, so I'm just gonna divide this onto two pans just to ensure that we don't run the risk of steaming. From here, I'm gonna pop my trays into a 425 degree oven for 30 minutes, flipping halfway through. When the squash is done, you're gonna know because one, your kitchen is gonna smell amazing, Two, it's gonna be golden brown on the outside. And three, it's going to be fork tender and extremely delicious. Now you can of course enjoy this squash exactly the way it is. It makes a great side dish to some roasted chicken or some fish. It also pairs really well with whole grains and it happens to make a wonderful head start ingredient. So you could absolutely roast this up on the weekend and then store it in an airtight container and keep it right in the fridge for up to five days and then pull it out to help boost up some other meals. Maybe you wanna serve it with your breakfast, with some eggs, it's delicious in a salad and it also makes a great base for soup. So so allow me to show you how to make a very easy butternut squash soup. Now if I knew I was making the soup ahead of time, I would prep the squash exactly the same way that we just did, and then I would get it on my rimmed baking sheet and I would add a chopped up onion. If you wanted to get really crazy, you could also do a chopped up apple here, and then I would season it with the avocado oil, the salt, and the pepper. So still very simple. 
Then get the whole thing in the oven, roast for 30 minutes, flipping halfway through just like we did before. Pull it out and let it cool until it's cool enough to handle. Now just a side note, if you didn't know ahead of time and you didn't have the onions and the apples, you could just do this with the butternut squash. So just a little FYI. Once my squash is cool enough to handle, I transfer it into a high speed blender along with some veggie broth. I'm gonna leave the exact measurements down in the description box below. Pop on the lid and blend it up. You're just gonna let it go until you have a nice, rich, thick, creamy consistency. Now, if it seemed a little too thick, you just add a little extra broth or you could certainly even add a little bit of water. Both will get the job done, but when it's done, you want it to look like this. It's almost velvety. And then from here, you've got two choices. You could transfer it into an airtight container, store it back in the fridge as a quick lunch or dinner for during the week, or you could transfer it into a pot, heat it up, and then serve it in your favorite bowl. Personally, I love to top it with just a few dots of goat cheese and a sprinkle of roasted and salted pumpkin seeds right in the center. They both add a great flavor and some really great texture. So smooth and creamy and comforting. Now another recipe that I really enjoy making when I have the roasted butternut squash on hand is a kale butternut squash and avocado salad. So simple and so delicious. So I start by making a simple vinaigrette. So into a spouted cup, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of finely diced red onion, two tablespoons each of extra virgin olive oil, apple cider vinegar, and fresh squeezed orange juice. Season that with a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper, whisk it up and set it aside. Then in a nice big bowl, I've got one small bunch of kale that I've stemmed, washed, dried, and then chopped into really small bite-sized pieces. Now the next step is optional, but I do recommend giving the kale a quick massage before you move on with the salad. So what I do is I just drizzle it with a little bit of the olive oil and a sprinkle of kosher salt, and then I just use my fingers to rub that all into the leaves of the kale. What this does is it tenderizes the kale because it breaks down some of the fibers in the kale, which I really like to do because it makes it taste better, but it also makes it very family friendly. Then from there, I'm ready for my add-in. So I start with two cups of the roasted butternut squash, a third of a cup of walnuts or any nuts that you have on hand or prefer, a third of a cup of dried cherries, and then one chopped avocado. Then drizzle that vinaigrette right over the top and gently toss everything together. Mm -mm -mm. Then you're just gonna divide it into your bowls and enjoy. This salad is so simple, it's so delicious, and it is hearty enough to make you wanna eat a salad even as the weather starts to get a little bit cooler. So that's what I've got for you guys today. I cannot wait to see what you decide to try first. And when you do, don't forget to snap a picture and tag me on Instagram and on Facebook so I can see all of the clean and deliciousness you're whipping up in your very own kitchens. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share this video with anybody else you know who wants to eat well, cook more, and feel great. I'm Danny Spees, and I will see you back here next time with some more clean and deliciousness. Cheers. Hello my friends, boop, one, two, three. Hello my friends, it's Danny, and today I'm gonna show you how to cook and, that's not what I'm showing you. Now, butternuts, boop, didn't know as well. Whatever it takes to get the job done. Hashtag, I support you, hashtag. <laughs>